Is your recorder on, sir? We are. Okay. I will call the meeting of the Green Bay Economic Development Authority to order. Uh, roll call. Member Sikich is here. Alderman Duane. Here. Phil Hilgenberg. Here. Pam Parrish. Here. Mike Borley is excused. And Eric Genrick. Here. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Moved by Duane. Is there a second? Second. Second by Genrick. All in favor say aye. Aye. Carried. Uh, is there approval? Uh, oh, t uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes for our February 8th, 2017 meeting. So moved. Moved by second. Parrish, second by Dwayne. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Carry. Uh, old business being none. <coughs> new business consideration with possible action on request to approve Velp Avenue Court Area Wide Plan. Kevin. Yep. Um, I'm actually going to turn it over to Matt. And if you haven't met, Matt, this is Matthew okay. Cannon. We haven't met for a while. Okay. Uh, so this is Matthew Cannon. He's the new development specialist uh, in our department, uh, our team. Uh, he replaces Julie Upfall, who is here. Uh, and one of Matt's roles will be working on our Brownfields program. Okay. And part of that involvement um, is also you know, working on some neighborhood planning. And then so Matt's been our, our point person to develop that new plan. So um, I guess if you want to talk a little bit about sure. where we're at and what we're going for today. All right, so it's my understanding that um, Staff had previously come to you at least once or twice um, about this plan. A uh, portion of our Brownfield grant funds went to pay for this plan. Um, if you look through the plan at all, you'll see um, on page uh, 27, 25 and 20, yeah, 27 and 28, and we have a we did an assessment of several properties throughout the site um, for brand, potential brownfields, and we got 64 potential brownfield sites within this corridor. Um, the corridor it runs from uh, right along Belp Avenue between Military all the way to Atkinson Drive, a little bit past that actually. Um, so it, Brownfields is a, a huge concern along this site. Um, during the planning process, we had five plan uh, steering committee meetings. We had three public open houses to gather input. Um, there was thorough discussion on brownfields during that planning process. Um, the plan has a focus on uh, new, new future uh, redevelopment efforts um, that can uh, make this uh, corridor more of a, a welcoming gateway into the community. Um, it goes into some very specific detail with four uh, transformative opportunity sites. Um, which actually includes some conceptual site plans. Uh, if you'd like to take a look at those, those are on page. Page 61. Yeah, so we've got four of them. This first one here um, is um, at Military in Belt, the northeast corner. Um, this is uh, actually, I believe, um, there's a redevelopment proposal maybe happening now. Um, but we had some conceptual ideas here on the next couple pages. Uh, we talked to the community about this site, and some ideas were a restaurant, a uh, convenience uh, store, gas station type um, of development here. Um, there's a couple others actually with this site if you want to keep going. Um, retail um, is another uh, request. And, um, commercial. Um, I, I think the Stantec was our consultant with this plan. And I, we think they did a very good job of um, working with community, assessing the needs. Um, we worked very closely with the neighborhood associations uh, directly to the south, um, speaking with them about their desires, what they'd like to see at these transformative sites. And, this is what we came up with. Matt, I have a, just kind of a general question. Sure. You talked about the brownfields, and there's lots of potential brownfields there. Um, who then will be responsible for the cleanup, the potential owner? Will there be a city, you know, private partnership, or how, how, would, how would that work? Um, well, actually, uh, later on in our agenda, we're going to be talking about, um, we've got a, recently got a Brownfield assessment grant, so we'll get to that a little bit okay. later. Okay. Um, and Velp Avenue is actually one of our focus areas for that grant application. 
So that's um, for the assessment of sure. those sites, not so much the clean water. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to scroll down to some of the other sites. Uh, this one is we're going to locus mm -hmm. and well, um, we did see a need for um, housing um, actually at this location. It seemed to make sense. Multifamily rental um, was something we heard um, from the um, community and the um, the consultants. So there's a couple different conceptual ideas for how this might be redeveloped. And now it's just an undeveloped parcel. And that was the old greenhouse? All right, to me, I So there. At least so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any remediation necessary for that? Uh, we actually don't know for sure. We didn't do an assessment of that. We did okay. do a phase one or phase two on that. Yeah, it just is. It's listed in our plan as a potential brownfield. Okay. Um, so there would have to be some more assessment work done. Yeah, for sure what's any cleanup is necessary there. I'm sure. okay. I think one of the things we talked about, I think Conrad Wayne talked about this, uh, I think you brought up with uh, the Tillman site, in terms of doing the assessment is, is timing, that they have a shelf life. Um, so that, you know, we like to do that when there's kind of like an imminent project or somebody's taking the tire so that, uh, you know, we can do that assessment, do that report, and then uh, it, it's good as they go through that, that process. So, I mean, you, you could do those now, but if it's that, for a year or two, they just have to come back and um, update it. But um, so, so that's why we're kind of look. I think identifying the potential one shows look. We're probably going to need uh, some review process here. Okay. Got it. All right. So this is the third uh, opportunity site. This is actually the Allen property. If you're familiar with that, what about the property behind it? That's that's for yourself. <coughs> um, behind it. There's so buildings behind it, yeah. These ones up here? The warehouses? Yeah. Also owned by Alwyn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All part of it. I'm just looking to see if you're looking beyond just the Alwyn front property and doing something behind right. it. I think these conceptual is really just focusing on those front properties. Um, and I think one of the reasons for that is uh, those properties further north are in the 100 year floodplain. Um, so the, they're a little bit there'd be some limitation there on redevelopment. One of the things that was discussed here, uh, Alder Dwayne, is that um, because it backs up, I mean, there's the floodplain issue, so in terms of building right, there, yeah. there's some restrictions, but you know, for these properties, um, you know, in terms of like building supplies, windows, doors, cabinets, things like that, you can do your, your showroom in that commercial space up on belt, but then you can still do the manufacturing in the back. Because, um, you know, there's no neighbors aside from the railroad track, so it lends itself well to, I think, what Showcase Kitchens is out here right now, uh, before they had their fire, uh, I think, Windows of Wisconsin, I mean, up in Howard, you know, you've got ABC, but those are the types of uses I think, you know, we're talking about, especially for this area, um, you know, because, look, we're still into manufacturing, so making things, so this would be a good area for doing some of that. Uh, one of the neater ideas that kind of came out of this was um, one of the historic properties uh, further to the northwest on the bill. Um, the consultant and the community understood that, you know, this is kind of a neat property. There's some interesting opportunities here for reusing that space and a brewery tap room uh, was, one of the, was one of the concepts that was discussed. Excuse me, are you going to open up the comments. I just want to make one comment. And yeah, after this presentation. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, and so this is the last one, um, the northeast corner of Atkinson and Belt. Um, so with this one, uh, we see more of a mixed use um, concept. We understand that global recognition is a tremendous business, it's existing on this site, the concept plan has it continuing on this site, uh, but some of the, the parcels uh, adjacent to that, we can see some redevelopment potential, maybe uh, office, retail, um, I think some of the other conceptual plans have uh, multifamily residential, because we are backing right up to um, a single family residential community right there, so um, to kind of uh, make that a more compatible Uh, grocery was something we heard oftentimes uh, from several members of the community as well that they would like to have a grocery store. So um, some of our conceptuals do
do include that. Um, a couple of different ideas. Some include a larger uh, space with 65,000 square feet. Um, some do include a smaller size grocery store. So, um, yes, we've, as I mentioned before, we've had um, several open houses. Um, we're at that point now where we're ready to adopt the plan. Um, staff is recommending um, adoption both to this group and then also to plan commission so we can move forward to uh, Common Council to the next meeting next week. Correct. Yep, so this is at uh, Planning Commission. It'll actually be after this meeting here tonight. And then All tonight. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, I brought in uh, Mark Lyons as the primary planner on this. Um, he's been involved with this since the beginning. So if there's any more uh, questions or if you'd like some more detailed information, either him or I could. Just know. Committee have questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just more or less got a comment, Matt. Is sure. uh, er, on one of the earlier pictures you were talking about uh, uh, neighborhood associations, you know, putting in their mentioning gas stations, what they see. Just be careful of that because then you got a three time more with PB and PB and uh, Quick Trip and the new one that's here and whatever they're called and uh, starts with a Q, I think. Chris. Yeah. And then that's all we got is gas stations there once again. And, and that's not really what they're looking for. I, I know it's just part of the plan, and your mm -hmm. suggestions, but please just when you do this. Any other questions for Matt? Um, I have a few, but maybe we just yeah. open the floor. Okay, yeah. is there a motion to uh, open the second floor for uh, by Dwayne? Is there a second? Second, second by Genrick. All in favor say aye. 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 Period. Um, public yeah. comment, state your name. and uh, David Vanderlees. I live at 146 Alpine Drive. Okay. Um, when I look at this plan, I look at the map there. I look back at this map here. We had that stated, you know, in the 20s as industry. and. Uh, when I look at Green Bay, I see that our industrial parks are getting pretty full. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of TIFFs and all of those things, but that Eastside Industrial Park TIFF paid for itself 50 times over with the jobs that were created, the wealth of the community. Um, and I would like to see this uh, Belp Avenue stay an industrial area, especially to the north. And I would like to see the plan take into account for the railroad. We have three things there. We have the highway right there, and I think the state would probably work with the city to put, you know, something in on military to get on the highway. Uh, we have the railroad there, and we also have high power lines there. So, I mean, that's, a, that's perfect for industry. I think if you look at the east side industrial park, there is, should be some room in the plan for you know, some retail or some restaurant, like you, know, you have Mackinac's at the edge of the industrial park. But, you know, I guess what I'd like to see is that it stay in industrial and that we try to work as far back towards the track as possible and, and try to have our economic development place some job creators in there, places that can, you know, have 60, 70 manufacturing industrial jobs. Because our industrial parks, you know, aren't getting any bigger. And I can tell you one thing, Hobart and Pulaski, they'll grab these jobs from us. If we, you know, if we keep putting everything to mixed use and homes, you know, they'll grab the jobs from us. They'll end up somewhere and it won't be in Green Bay. So I just think we got to take a look at it and make sure that we try to keep the theme of industrial with some transition properties in there. So, you know, people have a place to eat and it does still function, but I think we can agree most people wish they had a grocery store in there, you know, right around the corner from their house. I don't think that's the best use for this. So that's all I really came down here to say. Thank you for your comment, uh, Matt or Kevin. Do you have any response or reply to that? Or? Yeah, I mean, I think um, part of I think with the, the one site, the all one site. I mean, I think just making sure that we still do protect. Um, you know, or where there's opportunities for that industrial to allow for them in there. Um, I, I think one of the things with the plan is, you know, that balance between, uh, you know, the, the planning process and what we'd like to see there strategically and then also reality of, of what happens as they come through. Uh, I, I think given the nature of that and industrial 
20, 30, 40 years ago isn't what industrial is today. And I, I think, you know, with the right project, um, you know, even though it may not call out industrial specifically for, for a piece of that, I think there's still opportunities to make that fit into the neighborhood. Um, but I think that that is something that maybe we could look at as far as final comments to the plan of just making sure that, um, you know, again, just from an economic development perspective, primary job generators are always the best investment in terms of then there's exponential, you know, spending in the community. I mean, the, the restaurants, the shops, uh, I mean, those things are, are nice, but really they're not there unless you have the primary job generators. Um, so I think, I don't know, that may pass one more just to Mark. I mean, I'm sure this conversation came up through yeah. your So the plan discussion. does still call for industrial uses. Um, kind of what we've highlighted here today are some of the nodes that may orient themselves to other uses. But for a large section of this plan, you know, we, we say kind of at the corners, military, Atkinson, commercial uses are viable at those corners. Right. On the north side of Velp, kind of in between there, the plan is still largely calling for industrial reuses. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not saying this needs to get rid of industrial. In fact, the market research done as part of this calls out the fact that it is a very viable industrial area for the rail access, for the immediate highway access. So the plan does still call for industrial. It just We've highlighted some of those commercial nodes that could complement an industrial area in between them as well. Mark, is there a map? I feel like it's a map. Was it in the plan or was that one of the appendices? Um, there's the, the, the general land use map at the start, but then really it's the industrial market context section um, starting on page like 52 that kind of talks about how this area is still a suitable industrial area. Uh, likely needs maybe some, um, you know, modernization of some of the industrial property that is there, but is still suitable for industrial uses. Could it be possible for this committee to adopt the plan and say it, we want to keep the, the, the place primi primarily industrial? With so, I mean, we obviously know you need a few other things in that whole stretch. Well, <clears throat> well, this committee is primarily advisory right. relative to all this. I'm sure the plan commission would actually get involved in implementing this. Uh, but we could definitely, you know, provide recommendations for them to look at various things. And the only other question I would have, I know that I'm familiar with that land, a lot of it's floodplain. Do you have a map that shows what's actually buildable and usable and how much of that land right now has nothing on it where you can actually build something? Is there a way to put a road behind between military and the rail, and the rail yard? And, or is that all wetland? <coughs> Once you get more than about one property deep along Velp, you get into the 100-year floodplain and then the wetland. 100-year floodplain is buildable. Mm -hmm. There are some additional costs and things that have to be done to build within the 100-year floodplain. It's when we really get beyond that and we really get into the wetland areas that development can be much tougher. It can still be done, but after it's at about a property deep on Velp, you really get into the wetland area which can propose, you know, some significant challenges when we talk about development. Uh, we don't have a specific map that calls out the whole area. On some of the individual maps we show um, for redevelopment opportunity, we highlight where the wetland and floodplain um, jurisdictions are. Yeah. As Mark said, I mean, you can see, like, really, once you get past that first parcel, it's pretty, pretty wet. Um, mm -hmm. Just point, I mean, the floodplain, I mean, you can look, work towards building around, and in general, you know, if we're building industrial structures, usually it's pretty easily accomplished, but in terms of fill, it's where we start to get some of the wetland issues that make it more complicated in terms of permitting or expanding, uh, you know, what uses are, are there. Any other questions? Yeah, I had a chance to read through the plan. Just wanted to applaud the staff and the community for stepping up to, to create the document. I think it's really thorough. Um, one of the items that um, that I noticed, and it's a big point of discussion, not just here on Belt, but around the community, is um, the bikeability and walkability of the corridor. And so I know when um, when Belt was proposed to be reconstructed, going back to 07 or 08, whenever that decision was made, the decision was made not to put in bike lanes there, and that's also noted in the plan. Um, and it sort of says that it's it's not feasible to do so, and so I just wanted to kind of investigate that a little bit and figure out exactly, and I, I appreciate some of the 
some of the other plans, the bike boulevard, um, and some of those ideas. But you know, if we if we do want to make the core, you know, interesting and accessible to pedestrians and cyclists, the current construction is is not at all welcoming. Yeah. So this road. Was Excuse obviously me, I didn't want to interrupt there, but we need to come back in. A no, oh, we're we're back in. Okay. Is there yeah, a motion? I didn't want to stop. Yeah. Is there a motion yeah. to move to return to regular? Is there a second? Second. Second by Eric. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Carried. Sorry. So when the road was reconstructed several years ago, it is classified as an interconnecting highway by the state, and therefore they control that section of the road. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, the bike lanes were kind of taken off the table during their planning process, and they still control it. Um, during this plan, we did a little bit of uh, primary research into the feasibility of what could be done to change that road. We got a lot of feedback that basically said nothing's going to be on the table from the state at this point. It was recently done, right. and it's not feasible, especially with the right of way that was required when they did the road to go even wider. It would have had to have been changed to one lane of traffic in each direction, center turn lane with bike lanes. And with that um, interconnecting highway status, the state doesn't do that of that status they want two travel lanes in each direction that's why we tried to touch on the best we could or what are maybe some alternative possibilities for this area um, we still really note in the plan that maybe from the bike ped standpoint we can't put bike lanes in but if we're going to propose some of these retail establishments on the north side we do need to do something to how do we safely move people from the south side of belt to the north side of belt yeah, or trail behind the properties. It won't take that much room. That is one of the proposals. Is, is there an ability maybe to wind back on the north side right. of Belt, a, a multi-use trail or something? Right. Um, we left a little bit of that up to the fact that the city's kind of in the early stages of looking at a bike, a full city-wide bike pad plan that would incorporate this area as well. What's the um, the footprint of the roadway itself? How, how many feet? I do not have that information off the top of my head. Okay. Because obviously, I mean, there's again reference to the the wide outside land. Yep. I mean, that is like, I don't know if you've ever seen the Seinfeld episode, but it's like the luxury yep. land. They, I mean, it's just an enormous. Yeah, that was kind of the <coughs> compromise right. when the state built the road was they went with the wide outside lands. Now, through this process, obviously, we spoke to the bike ped community, yeah. and they weren't comfortable even with the wide outside lanes. They said, yeah, they're wide outside lanes, but really, the rate of traffic and the, and the way traffic flows on that, even the more experienced bikers are not overly confident in traveling along Belt. Right. So they, they were some of the ones that also suggested, let's look at maybe parallel routes. Right. Yeah, I mean, if we could just get that that number, if there's a, a way to... Yeah, I'm sure we can get that. I'm curious just to, to know for sure that there's not the room for the five-foot bike lane. I think they're 15. The I've done, yeah, 15? which you have to look, but which makes it then look, even if you went down to 11-foot lane, it's only four feet, but you can't... You need five feet to do the street. Right. What's the inside one? I think it's. I think they're both. They're twelve and fifteen. Okay. So you can go as low as what eleven per lane. Correct. And then I think that's where it goes back to the connecting yes. highway. If that it's a truck, if it's a truck route, they need the twelve. There's going to be a truck route. You're going to have. Believe me. You're going to need to get through there. It's oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The Brown County's original proposal, the MPL, was for single travel lane, bike lanes, middle turn lane. Um, and it all fit yep. the, the, the way the state jurisdiction works with that interconnecting highway. They, they weren't okay with that plan. Mm -hmm. and they worked with DPW for the city, and ultimately they deemed that the road needed to be built the way it was. Um, there was a lot of um, neighborhood feedback against that plan, but ultimately it's what ended up being decided and built. Right. Okay. <coughs> So this is just kind of a goal you're looking at, a comprehensive plan, short term right now. I mean, long term's not here yet. I mean, this this plan is mainly focusing on the land uses. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve the comprehensive plan as it's presented. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Carried. Okay. Good job. Very good. Okay, item five, Be Bold 3 presentation by Competitive Wisconsin, Inc. Uh, they could not be here today, oh. so we ask that you just hold this till okay. the next meeting. Move the hold to an Is there a second? Second. Second, uh, second by Gennrick. All in favor say aye. 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 Carry. Aye. Okay, Brownfield's program update. Can I tie it right in? It does. 
Um, so in short, and one day Matt can uh, chime in with this, we are were awarded a uh, $300,000 grant from oh, Vermont Protection good. Agency. Good. Um, so thanks to Matt, thanks to Wendy, thanks to Julia for right, right, putting the application right. all together. Um, we just found out, what, about two weeks ago? Officially um, it was announced last week. Maybe it was two weeks ago. No, they told us a little bit before that, but they told us to keep it under wraps mm -hmm. so they could officially announce it on their own. Sure. Yeah. Who's, who's providing that? Uh, Environmental Protecting Agency. Uh, so in short, um, that will allow us to continue the program that we had before, where we basically are able to partner and do the phase one, phase, phase two, two environmental yeah. assessments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as Matt said, Valp Avenue is a targeted area. Mm -hmm. Uh, north Broadway, north of Dousman, South Broadway, south of mm -hmm. Walnut, down to Mason, down to Ninth Street, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of our, our, our primary focus areas. Um, but if you look at just also kind of the timing and, and, and dovetail of things, look, we got the other grant about three years ago when we were just finishing up the University Avenue plan and helped us identify some sites in there. Um, and, and with that, I think, you know, we really have identified potential sites here, whether sure. that's the greenhouse site sure. or, or some of the catalyst sites that we've had here. Um, to really get those projects off the ground um, that we haven't before. Um, I think the last grant, just some of the stats that we put together, uh, we were able to do about 29 properties, um, which, I mean, ranged from small little, you know, quarter acre parcel to multiple, multiple acres, um, uh, but really in able to, you know, leverage millions of dollars in terms of future investment. I and mean, if you look at just downtown, um, between uh, the CAG Convention Center, uh, Hampton Inn, uh, City Deck Landing, Metro, uh, throughout there, that was all started or our funding into doing a lot of that assessment work there. Uh, I don't know if you want to have anything add. To it was pretty competitive. There was only yeah. 30 communities that were selected in the United States. Oh. Region five. Cool. What? I found out it was Region 5. 30, region 5. Okay, 30 for Region 5. five. Which is six states in the It's still a big yeah. region. Yeah, okay. So, okay, that's good. And then, um, the scores, um, the top score was 200 and we got 198. Wow. So you had to be, so um, we had to be above 195 in order to receive this year. So that was pretty, um, there was a lot of work put into it. Um, we submitted last December and um, had a great application. But we have a great story to tell. There was so much redevelopment on the east side and we were able to leverage the dollars and really bring some quality development to Green Bay. And so now it'll be heavily focused. Um, there'll be other community portions of it. It can go to other parts of the community, but our story was really strong for developing the, the uh, western shore now that the east shore is so developed in that, focusing in those neighborhoods, and then where this plan was as well. And this plan added to um, part of the strength of our story. So, good job. Great. Yeah, anyway, good job. just um, we have a great story to tell, yeah. and it was nice to be able to report good that. Good success, success story. Very good. Okay, any other questions on that? Okay, item seven, development directors update. Uh, sure, just a few quick notes. Uh, one, again, just want to introduce uh, Matt, our, our development specialist. Um, he's going to be taking off uh, some of the programs Julia left off on. Uh, he'll be working on the Brownfields program. Uh, he'll also be working with our, our bids uh, in terms of business development and events, um, and also working on uh, some neighborhood plans and initiatives, um, you know, along with some of the other things that we do here. Uh, we also uh, hired uh, GIS or design specialist as one of the positions that was created. Uh, her name is Erin Rosnick. Uh, she came on board also about the same time as Matt and she'll be helping us uh, basically um, you know, doing some design work, GIS work, but really as we start to look at you know, future developments in these parcels, she'll be able to put together you know, concept sure. plans and some yeah. ideas for sure. uh, what might be possible. Um, you know, one of the ones we've just talked about, uh, potential brownfield going forward is the Royal Cleaner site. Um, so, you know, what might be some ideas for how to redevelop uh, that area now that the building is down? Uh, I think we've got um, an interested seller, and so as we work, uh, you know, towards moving forward on that project, you know, what might fit and, and what could the city support uh, uh, development there? Um, just in terms of just a, a few specific projects for us, um, our Erie Road parcel, uh, we've talked before, uh, yeah. we are still working on the negotiations, yeah. but they are moving forward, which mm -hmm. has, has been very good. Um, and I think I'm pretty hopeful that this summer um, mm -hmm. we can reach agreement to, to come forward and to get that property sold, mm -hmm. uh, which would be really great for us, but also really great for an I-43 sure. uh, business market moving forward. Um, with that, our public works 
uh, department is working on uh, extending the sewer and water through the Grand View. Uh, uh -huh. Negotiating the, the easements uh -huh. for that is going to be, um, which then basically opens up everything east of, of Erie Road for future development and expansion of the business park. You know, as Mr. Wayne at least had said, um, you know, we're, we're building out yeah. looking for space. Yeah. Um, you know, Velp Avenue, it's great, but they're the redevelopment sites, so it's also important to balance out with some of the greenfield sites that, that we have there. Um, so we're hopeful that this, this summer we can work on that. Um, so those are just two quick things I wanted to update on. Um, and if there are any other questions, we have to, to discuss. Hmm? Anything else? Anything? Okay. Well, thanks for the update. Thanks for the good work. I guess I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Hamrick. All in favor say aye. 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 Carried. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, another meeting we go to. Another meeting. Yeah, the uh, presentation.